Hi everyone, I'm back out here at the park for a take two of yesterday's video on uh, the personalization of cinema, personalized cinema. A uh, lot less windy today, so I'm hoping that this is going to be much clearer. I really do want to get these thoughts out here, so I wanted to come out here and go through this again, and I hope this will be of some interest. Now, I, I'm recording these as a an elaboration and a clarification of some comments I made in a recent video responding to a question about the future of cinema. And if you watch that video, I said uh, that, uh, to me, one of the, the major things that's going to emerge out of the developments that we're seeing is a more uh, personal cinema. And as I thought about that more, I thought, well, you know, I think I want to make a distinction here that the, that the word I was probably looking for is actually personalized cinema. Now, wh what do I mean by that? Well, I'll get to that in a, in a, in a few minutes, but... Uh, it occurred to me that anybody watching that video probably would think, uh, you know, what are you talking about exactly? The personal cinema as an idea has been around for a long time. You know, why are you saying that you see this being the future of cinema? And uh, that's true. Uh, the idea of personal cinema, personal filmmaking has been around for a long time. And I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about that idea and where I see these developments going a little differently to help uh, elaborate and explain a bit more about what I meant by that and why I think saying personalized cinema, making that distinction is important. Now, you know, the idea of personal cinema to me is a, it's an alternative to the commercial models of, the, well, the commercial film industry. That to me is really, uh, you know, sp specifically, I guess in this case, Hollywood. And that, to me, is really how I think of personal filmmaking. It's it's a filmmaking that is the work of a um, you know an individual uh, creator, an individual artist uh, that exists primarily outside of the you know the mainstream commercial space, and with uh, less of an emphasis, more of an emphasis on expression, and less of an emphasis on making money. Now, I think this idea, uh, you know, I was thinking about some of the kind of earlier models of this idea over the last uh, century, basically, because it's been around for, the idea of personal filmmaking, I think, has been around for a long time. And one of the first examples of it that I could think of was the um, amateur cinema movement of the 1920s and 30s. Now, the amateur cinema movement, that name, amateur cinema, uh, is used uh, doesn't really it, for for those filmmakers. It didn't carry the kind of negative connotations that amateur might carry for us today. They were using that word. It was a self-applied label. Uh, they were using that word, and really, it's the original intention of its meaning, which is to say somebody doing something for the love of it, rather than for money or you know the professionalization. It wasn't a reflection on I think the quality of their work or the the care that they took in it. So. The amateur cinema movement was really born out of the introduction of the 16 millimeter film stock and equipment in, in the early 20s. And what this did was it opened up the possibility for uh, people to get access to the equipment to make movies on their own. And from what I've read of it, much of the amateur cinema, uh, the work produced by the amateur cinema filmmakers, was uh, basically home movies, you know, films taken tra of their travels, day-to-day um, -day life, but specifically, I think, with an emphasis on things that were seen as uh, somewhat special, you know, so, like I say, trips, uh, um, scenic views, that kind of thing, and done with a great deal of care in terms of uh, framing, composition, and uh, one of the interesting things I've also read about the amateur cinema movement uh, is that they did not so much see themselves as being in opposition to Hollywood, but ra rather kind of almost trying to complement what Hollywood was doing in the, in the way that they, uh, I think they felt like they didn't see themselves again as in, in being in opposition. They, they wanted, I think they felt like they shared a concern with, with Hollywood that they, uh, they loved film and they wanted it to be as good as it could be. So there was this kind of um, almost a, an idealistic undercurrent to a lot of this work in wanting to take the medium of filmmaking into some really, um, I guess, more more artistic directions. Um, 
And one of the interesting things about the le the uh, cinema movement as well was the amateur cinema movement was that they uh, created the amateur cinema league as a kind of network to get these films circulated uh, among other the, the clubs throughout the country and among among the members to kind of put the members in touch with each other and to try to build a sense of community. And I, I say that this is probably one of the uh, really the earliest examples of people trying to create an alternative and more personal type of approach to filmmaking. Now you can also talk about the avant-garde movements that arose, I mean really around the same time in the US, but uh, specifically I think and, and most significantly in the uh, 1940s and 50s and 60s with you know filmmakers like Maya Darren and Jonas Mikas making very personal films. Um, you know, that, that, that's another earlier example of this idea in action. And at the same time, uh, the rise of the art house movement uh, with you know, European filmmakers, especially like Bergman and Fellini, who were making films that were much more reflective of a personal vision, I think, than for the kind of popular commercial concerns that Hollywood focused on. And uh, the, the, the budding uh, independent film movement represented by people like Cassavetes, uh, working, I think, for much the same purposes. Now all of these, you know, I'm just, I'm just giving a few of the major examples, uh, you know, all, all of these uh, are, are earlier examples of personal filmmaking, and I want to acknowledge that because I, you know, after I made that video, I, I realized that um, talking about this as the future may be a little unclear, uh, because there are so many examples of, uh, from the past of, of trying to do the same thing. What I would say is, now, what I, what, where I th see this is a little different now is, like I said, I was using this term, pers the personalization or personalized cinema. And that has as much to do with the way audiences now are watching these films. Because if you think about the art house movement, the independent film, uh, you know, various independent film uh, movements over the last several decades, there's still a very strong co commercial component to it. Uh, partly because of the cost of the film, just the nature of getting it out there. In, you know, into theaters. But where I, I think this personalization aspect is really coming in is through the technology of the web, uh, specifically you know, platforms like YouTube and sharing the work through social media. Now, you know, I, and I was thinking about this too, that one of the things with YouTube is that, of course, YouTube has been around for 15 years now, and it's not exactly new. And there certainly have been uh, content creators who have uh, made a name for themselves in that space. And, I, and, and thinking about that, it's one of the things that, uh, that I think draws people, viewers, to the, the different uh, YouTubers and content creators is the question of personalities. Now, what I, what I mean here is, if you think about a lot of the popular vlogs out there, I mean, there's vlogs and, you know, videos uh, on all different conceivable topics. But I think what keeps people coming back to certain uh, channels, certain YouTubers, certain content creators, is that you're interested in them as a personality or their perspective or what, you know, what it is they have to say. And in that sense, I think that these expectations that have been formed on YouTube over the last 10 or 15 years are sort of uh, almost reverse influencing filmmaking, if this makes sense. So. What we're seeing now is that YouTube is not just a place to publish your film, you know, put it up, walk away, and, and leave it there and hope for, you know, hope for it to get a few hits. I think now that there really is an interactive uh, engagement that filmmakers have to be prepared to take part in with their audiences and getting their films out there. And this includes, of course, interacting through YouTube, but also through, uh, you know, a variety of different social media platforms. Uh, and in that sense, I think filmmaking. Th th and this is this is getting to this uh, idea I have of you know uh, uh, personalized cinema. I think that what we're going to see, especially as there's more and more content being created uh, of, of all different kinds, I think it's going to become more important than ever that uh, filmmakers and their audience have this direct relationship, this kind of personalized engagement that will. Um, you know, help uh, build a, basically a return return audience. You know, a steady uh, audience, and also help gain new viewers as well. 
Uh, I don't want to make it sound though like I'm talking about you know chasing numbers and view stats and subscribers and all of that because I think that really uh, ultimately does have to be secondary at least to making films and I'm not suggesting that uh, anybody you know pursue making films with the eye of you know playing algorithms or catching uh, you know bringing in viewers like that I, that's that's not what I'm saying at all but I, I think rather that because there's now such a variety of content out there and because both uh, the creators of the work and the viewers have come to expect I think a certain level of engagement I'm just, I'm just saying that that idea that it currently exists can be applied to filmmaking uh, so I don't I don't think this is a uh, don't don't take this as a uh, call to you know chase uh, numbers or play the YouTube popularity game or anything like that. I really am not. Uh, it's really not what I'm talking about or advocating here at all. I'm just saying that these existing expectations I think will inform the ways uh, in which filmmakers and their audiences interact in the future. And in that sense, I think it is going to be more personalized. I think we're also going to see a lot more interaction between filmmakers and these kind of, uh, you know, social media spaces, and that's already happening, of course. But I think it's going to become a place to share ideas, to share, um, you know, not just not just tips on making films and things like that, but uh, but really to share ideas where ideas will grow and be nurtured and uh, and, and spread. And I think that uh, again, it's just based, it's building off of existing expectations and and. Uh, possibilities that are already there but in that sense I think the when I talk about the personalized cinema uh, that's really where I see that coming from it, it's really about the relationship between the filmmaker and the viewer and the expectations that are there now uh, thanks to platforms like YouTube and um, you know, the ver various social media platforms um, but I, you know, I, and I, I think that as far as it, uh, this is, and then this other word that I used in that video was the idea of um, audiences and, and film becoming more fragmented. And this kind of ties in with this idea of the idea of cinema as a language. And one of the questions in that video was, you know, whether I think the language of uh, a cinema as a language is dead or dying. And as I said, I think what, what is dying or possibly even dead now is the idea of cinema as a common language. And what I meant by that, of course, I, I mean, I said this in the video, but I'll just re mention it here. What I, what I mean by that is that as there are so many different approaches and uh, styles of, of, of filmmaking, I mean, it's, 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 it's even beyond the issue of styles of filmmaking, but just so many different forms of content uh, that, that are, that are um, coming up, that the idea of there being uh, kind of that shared experience of a, of a film, I think, is definitely... Uh, going away or has gone away. I mean, it's much like people talk about the uh, idea of the death of the monoculture and the mainstream, that everything is kind of fragmented into all these different currents. Uh, of course, there's the idea in television, this has been talked about for quite a while now. You know, in the 90s, you had the idea of the water cooler show that people would all watch and then talk, of, you know, the idea was they'd talk about it around the water cooler at the office the next day. You know, that kind of... Uh, um, uh, content, uh, you know, whether it's a TV show, movie, whatever, that everybody watches, that everybody is aware of, everybody discusses, uh, that everybody references, you know, I think that is largely on the way out. Now, I think a lot of these types of things may persist as memes and other, uh, you know, uh, references on the internet, but I don't think that's quite the same thing. And it's easy, I think, because uh, again, because it's so fragmented, because the web is so fragmented that it's easy to think that everybody follows these uh, different, you know, different memes and will get these different references, but that's not necessarily the case. And, um, you know, similar, similarly with film, I think about one of the first big movies when I was, when I was a kid that everybody saw was Jurassic Park. And then, you know, a few years after that, Titanic was another film that everybody I know went to see and could would talk about and I personally don't really see that kind of uh, thing much anymore with film it'd be very hard for me to name a film that you know that I can say everybody that I know has seen it and would would uh, know what I'm talking about if I were referring to something in it 
uh, that's just my experience, but that's that's where I kind of see this fragmentation in film. Uh, I mean, again, it's happened. I don't think this is this is anything um, new or surprising. I think the fragmentation has already happened, and I think it's only going to continue to become, uh, you know, more more split and more, and more uh, diverse with all these different currents. But then again, this gets back to the idea of personalized cinema because you have as many different types of films being made as there are filmmakers and making them for viewers that they feel reasonably confident that they're going to connect with when they release the work. Uh, even the recording a video like this and you know putting it out there onto YouTube, I'm, you know, there, there are probably, you know, at least a couple or a few people that I'm, you know, I, I'm reasonably sure we'll probably see this video and might even have, you know, a, a comment uh, to, to, to make about it. You know, so, so it's when you're making these, uh, I, think, I think that's something else for filmmakers now that when you're making films for this, in, in this uh, sphere, at this level, you're not uh, necessarily making it for, it's, it's not being made with a, a quote unquote mainstream mass audience in mind you know yet at the same time there is a, there's a, the, there is an interesting aspect to this which i don't think we can you know we, we we shouldn't forget which is that by releasing films on youtube our audience is potentially worldwide and i think that's a remarkable thing uh you know when i when i first started making movies you know video on video uh videotapes that you know i was i would be lucky if maybe um, my family and maybe a couple of friends would ever see them, but now you know being able to put them out on the web, where potentially you have a worldwide audience, that's a that's a really remarkable thing. And I think sometimes it's easy to forget that as well, only because uh, we we become used to engaging with a kind of regular circle of viewers. Um, of course, the uh, challenge there is with again so many different types of films out there and videos on all conceivable subjects and just all of the content that there is to consume out there uh, you know you're not likely to be getting a uh, uh, well I'll, I'll just say that you know while the potential for a worldwide audience is there uh, you know just as the content is in increasingly fragmented so is the audience and uh, so we're kind of back to this point I guess about it being more personalized being a more direct engagement with your with your viewers um, and you know that's another thing I would say about the idea of like kind of chasing uh, a lot of success on YouTube is that you know I, I personally I, I am uh, very grateful for every uh, for every person who checks out my uh, films and videos and you know uh, en engages with them I mean I, I find that very rewarding so I'm not really uh, concerned about you know these huge numbers uh, I mean you know sure it's nice to have lots of people looking at what you create but it's also nice to have that kind of direct engagement with people who really respond to it as well uh, so that's something I think will um, probably continue to inform uh, filmmaking as uh, you know as things develop in the in the coming years and and, and uh, you know over the next decade or so you know, it's funny when I when I when I was uh, answering those questions in that video. Um, I have to admit they were they were kind of difficult questions for me in some ways uh, because you don't like I said in there. I want to avoid making uh, big predictions. You know, it's kind of easy to make big predictions and then uh, you know and then kind of sit back and see what happens and you know see if you're right or not. And I'm not really uh, sure that that's. I don't really necessarily see a whole lot of point to that, but I think what is valuable is looking at where things are already developing and then kind of seeing how you can stay out ahead of those developments. Um, and in that sense, I think the recogni recognition of a more you know, increasingly fragmented uh, audience and, uh, and, and really the value of engaging and, and personalizing that um, Viewing experience, I, I think those are important, uh, you know, factors that I would, uh, that I, you know, am personally very much responding to. I know, like, uh, one thing that I've definitely found in terms of thinking about the question of the audience is, and, and why I'm making films, really. I mean, let's be honest, why I'm even making the films to begin with, uh, aside from the fact that I want to, 
It's that, uh, you know, I want people to enjoy them. I want people to get something out of them. And that's why I'm not making films anymore with the idea of, you know, like short films, like with the idea of putting them into film festivals or, or, or you know, that kind of thing. Because, um, you know, ultimately I want to, I, I'm making films more than ever now, films that I personally want to make, films that uh, you know, feel right to me to make at this, at this point in time. And uh, that I hope will you know, resonate with uh, the people who take the time to watch them in some way or other. Uh, and, you know, it goes, to me, it goes way beyond the issue of, you know, liking or disliking the film. I think that's, I'm not really that interested in that. I, I hope that um, one of the, uh, I, I hope to be able to, you know, see, and I think this is one of the the, the most important aspects of the personalization uh, that I'm talking about here, which is that film can really become a way of sharing experiences with each other. Um, whether it's something like, you know, going back to the idea of um, some of the very earliest examples of this with the amateur cinema movement, you know, whether, th whether it's sharing uh, places that you go, you know, places that may n you know, normally may not see represented on film, uh, that you you know can bring viewers again from around the world potentially uh, to kind of closer to your own experiences to your own perspectives on things and that's a, that's one of the reasons why I think the realist approach has so much potential in this moment because it's allowing us to um, you know again it's allowing us to share authentic hopefully authentic uh, experiences and perspectives uh, whether you're making, and, and I don't just mean in the sense of a, a, a like a documentary. I mean whatever it is you're doing, whatever story you're telling, uh, you know, whatever it is you're doing, uh, whatever kind of film you're making, uh, that those. But hopefully, you know that, you know, those perspectives of the individuals creating them will come through, will be reflected in that, and I think that's a really valuable thing to share with each other. That's one of the other things about it, uh, go, you know, going, going back and looking over these different examples from the past century. I think one of the really interesting things is just how much more democratized uh, the, the filmmaking process has become. You know, when you go back to the days of 16 millimeter and the amateur cinema movement in the 20s and 30s, you know, filmmaking at that, even at that level, was still a primarily comfortably middle class or upper middle class um, activity. And that was reflected in the subjects of the films and the people making them. The avant-garde movement of the 40s and 50s and 60s, uh, I think, was uh, y you know still shared a, s a set of what I would consider fairly, uh, I, I would say, in some ways, kind of an elite set of values. And you know, eventually, was a lot of that type of filmmaking was co-opted in, 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 into the uh, museum world, which created kind of a further gated community around it. So. Uh, and, and again, I think like even with the art house and a lot of the independent film movements over the years, there's still been a strong commercial component to it that's made it prohibitive uh, uh, from being, you know, from becoming, com you know, completely and truly democratized. And I think we're getting closer to that. I don't think we're entirely there yet. And there are certainly still uh, barriers to entry, but I think they're getting lower. I think they're, they're becoming easier to, uh, you know, to, to get past. And we really are at a point now where anybody with a smartphone and an internet connection can make something and share it with the world. And I think that is the, uh, you know, we're getting in closer and closer to this kind of democratization, which is so important uh, to getting all these different perspectives out there and to showing us experiences and, you know, people and places and uh, all sorts of things that we may not have ever typically seen, uh, you know, represented in films before. And that to me is where it's getting really exciting, you know. It's one of the biggest drawbacks about Hollywood film for me, really, is the uh, the, the limited perspective that they that they represent. Um, I think it's one of the reasons a lot of the stories and plots feel so familiar and, and really stale and predictable at this point is the it's the lack of different perspectives on them. I don't think it's that the stories themselves have run dry I just think the you know the ways of telling them have have stagnated in a lot of cases and, and that's where I think um, 
you know, between the democratization of filmmaking and and the uh, increasing personalization of it all, I think that's where you know we're going to really see some serious strengths uh, emerge out of all this. But uh, yeah, I mean that that about covers it. I, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I um, wanted to make sure to mention here. I guess I guess just that the uh, you kind of you know sum up why I'm even recording this in the first place. It's that if you watch the previous video that I did on on the topic of um, you know when when I when I answered that question about the future of cinema and I was going on and on about film becoming increasingly personal. I hope that this ex expands and clar you know expands on that and clarifies really what I meant by that and why I think the personalization is such a a crucial part of this. Uh, uh, direction that I see uh, filmmaking going in in in, in not, not just in the, but it's not just in the future it's also here now I mean we're already seeing it and I think it's just a matter of seeing where it develops so uh, anyway um, you know I think I think that's uh, I, th I think that's about it and it, you know and and I hope this is of some I hope this is of some value in thinking about all of this, and um, you know, maybe I hope it maybe excites somebody who you know is out there just starting out, picking up a camera for the first time and making films, telling their their stories. You know, just keep getting out there and and uh, and, and and doing it and getting the getting the films made, and I think that's uh, you know where a lot of a lot of the exciting work is coming from now and uh, you never know who you'll connect with out there who, who will connect with what you're doing and and what they'll get out of that so just uh, keep at it anyway thanks for watching I'll talk to you later